Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. And you, I, I first want to start off by thank you for doing this um, again. I, I really, 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 really appreciate it. Well, I, I hope I can help. But, you know, because my, my thing is, I, I'm not really a musicologist. You can, and I'll, and I'll explain. Classical music and contemporary music or classical music and like gospel or spirituals, they have a lot more in common than they, than they're a lot more similar than they are different. So that's really what I um, wanted to have um, just a conversation with you about is just the similarities between um, like, spirituals and and classical music have you heard any spirituals that i have sung yes i've heard um you can tell the world that's actually one of my favorites that's one of my oh. favorite spirituals <laughs> uh -huh. where, did, where did you hear it where did it was on youtube um you were wearing a purple dress and i remember it because you had this very long uh, I won't call it a train, but it went from your shoulder to the floor. And I was like, I have never seen that before. Was it, was it. it purple? Yes, I believe it was purple. Yes. Okay. <laughs> was it was it in a in a concert? Yes, it was in a concert. It was you okay. and piano. And it was yeah, you had a purple dress. So I want to, for some reason, I want to say the year was like 2004, between 2004 and 2007. Oh, that must have been one of those concerts for dedication to Lotte Lehmann, my teacher, my, well, you know, many years ago. Now let us get, get to, the, to the point. The point is about the, the spiritual and, the, and, uh, and classical music. I don't think that I would, would say that the structures are similar, but they are not dissimilar. Very often, it's easy to sing spiritual, as easy to sing a spiritual as it is to sing a classical piece of music as well. And now for me to have to sing, to want to sing a gospel piece of music, I can't do that because I don't have that background. I have the spiritual background. And I think the format that a spiritual has is very classically written if one can say that how can you how can you say they were classically written when they were done by slaves they were originally done by slaves so and they didn't have the background they didn't have the musical background that that we have and we've had in this this last last 50 years or whatever but i think i think when you look listen to the music the way it is written uh for a spiritual it has a, a very deep background because it has to do with, with situations that are very similar in classical music, having to do with poverty and to do with life in general, uh, having to do with uh, being discouraged. You find a lot of music um, in, uh, in classical music about being discouraged. There's even one song by, written by Strauss called Zu Eignung, which, which has to do with that, but it tells you at the end, it says, be thankful for it. Be thankful before discouragement, because on the other side, on the other side of discouragement is, is always the, the positive side. Now, uh, I, I really have never analyzed uh, the, the, two, the two mediums, but when we think about the H.T. Burley, who was one of the original writers of, for the spirituals, let's say from in 1875 till, till, till now. He wrote uh, a lot of spirituals and he even influenced Dvorak, 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 exactly, exactly. He was the one who went to America and was so enthusiastic about, about H.T. Burley that he stayed on to study with him, to study the art of, well, of the spiritual. And he went back to, to, uh, to Prague and then that's when he wrote uh, the New World Symphony. And that tells you something about the, stru the, tru the structures of, of, of the, the, two, the two idioms. Um, that piece of music, the, 
the, the symphony of the, of, the, of, the, of the two worlds uh, was very, very popular, very popular. I can't remember the melody right now because you know I'm a little bit up in age and I forget these things rather, rather quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I was, was thinking them yesterday, but I didn't sing it yesterday. But, but it's very important to realize how we, how we can influence each other. Uh, a classical musician goes to, the, goes to a composer who writes spirituals and, and, and vice versa. Because H.T. Burley has a, a, very, a, a very straightforward manner of writing spirituals. Now, if you, if, I think at, at the time when I was starting to sing, H.T. Burley was one of the, pro, one of the most prominent um, uh, writers. And he had, uh, and then there's a, there was a blue, always a, a blue folder that his music was in. And uh, there was, uh, were you there? Did my Lord deliver Daniel? And um, the one about the deep, deep river, deep river, oh, that was very famous. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but, but the, the, the structure, the structure was just so wonderful. And, and, and so that you could you could easily use your full voice, your whole voice, in in his, in his compositions. H.T. Um, Burley. Um, there was Hall Johnson, who was also very popular, and um, uh, John John Work. Their structures were very very classically composed. Mm-hmm. So I know I've read somewhere and I've been told that uh, spirituals are akin to leader or art song or French melody. Would you say that's true? I would say that's true because I, that's why I say I find it so easy to sing mm-hmm. uh, because I, I sing both of those and, and I find it not at all difficult to go from the from the French uh, melody or the, or the German leader into a, into a spiritual. There's no there's no difference for the for the use of the voice. The voice is used in this exactly the same manner. Whereas with with the gospel music, you have to sort of do a lot of open throat, which is not good for the voice for for a classical singer. So that's why I, I guess that's why I avoided it. But I mean, I certainly enjoyed it. Enjoyed to listen to it and pat my foot, you know. <laughs> but um, I just never, never was able to to sing it authentically, to sing gospel music authentically. Whereas I could sing spirituals very authentically. Seeing as a lot of um, African American singers add spirituals to their recitals or programs, what is the reason for that? I don't really know what how, how other people think, but I felt always that. We owe it, I mean, I owe it to, to my people to include that music in, in my programs. I, I just felt that it was necessary. The music is, is, is part of me and it, is, it was part of what I learned as a child. And uh, I felt that it should be included in a serious evening of music. I mean, H.T. Burley, Hall Johnson, John Work, um, Boatman, the, you just have to realize that, that they are wonderful musicians and, and, and it's always been well received. Everywhere you go, they, are, they ask for the spirituals. So yeah. people request that you guys sing those. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Okay. So then you've recorded some albums. So then my question now would be, were you ever offered to record a spirituals album? No. No, but I, I, I have a spiritual album somewhere floating around because I did a concert in, in Salzburg in one of the major recital halls. If I'm not mistaken, half of the program, the second half of the program was spirituals. And I know that somebody has recorded them. And I've not gotten my hands on them, but I, I know that they're out there. Do you recall, like, maybe the year, because I'm good at sourcing things? Hmm. And maybe the beginning of 2000. Mm-hmm. 
two, maybe 2001, 2002. Seeing as you, something that I don't think is really cool that you just mentioned was how the spirituals composer influenced the classical composers. So why do you think a lot of people don't know that the two mediums work hand in hand? I, I think that is because people don't understand that there are, there are no boundaries. Now, I remember years ago having heard a recording of Helen Traubel, an opera singer who sang Wagner, mm -hmm. came from St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. She sang some spirituals. I, was, I didn't realize who the person was. I just heard this person singing and I thought, my God, who is that? That's beautiful, beautiful diction beautiful voice, how the, the, the delivery. And then at the end, it said, Helen Trouble. I would never ever have thought that a white woman could sing like that. A Negro spiritual, or a black spiritual, whatever we we'll call them these days. In any case, that, is, that shows you that, it, that it's possible. I think Marilyn Horn has, has sung some spirituals, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I have some friends here in Europe, in, in Berlin, who also sing spirituals. I mean, so it's, it's, not, it's not that if people don't hear it or, or, not, or, or not don't relate to it, maybe they just haven't been served the, the, the meal the right way. You know, you can get a, a wonderful dish of, of spaghetti and it doesn't have all the ingredients in it, you, who, wants to, who wants to eat it? So it's the same thing with, the, with singers. If the singer doesn't sing that music properly with the right, with the right in, in, emphasis and the right nuances, it's just another piece of music that it just went in the ear, not the other ear. But this, this, this Helen Traubel, now I think that Helen Traubel, because she came from St. Louis, she, it could well be that she had been influenced by some black people there. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but be that as it may, I think it has to do with exposure. How did I come to love spiritual, uh, 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 recital music, leader? How did I, I learned it from Marilyn Anderson. I heard it from Marilyn Anderson. So I, I, I wanted to sing that music that she sang. And, and why does she sing it like that? And my mother, I remember my mother saying to me um, at one recital, uh, Miss Anderson, she said, now, baby, listen carefully, because Miss Anderson is going to sing two songs that you'll be able to understand that there's a difference in, 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 in the characters. One of those songs was, was uh, Death and the Maidship, Death and the Girl, mm -hmm. and the other was the, the Earl Koenig. And, and she said, now, you, you listen very closely, because in, in this one here, and she got to it, there was the one about the three, the three characters. She said, now he's gonna, that's gonna be the father, the son, and the, well, the spirit, but a negative spirit. But you will, you will hear all those. And sure enough, as she would, as she would sing, she would, she would change her, her voice to relate to whichever character she was, was singing. And I became very, very interested in, in, in what she was doing. And Death and the Majin was about a little girl at, at, at the point of death. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting because to hear how she went down from a, from a, um, I think it was a low D. Oh, yeah. D to low D. And I thought, oh my goodness, I, I don't like that. But, <laughs> but then later on, when I had to learn that, that song, then I, I realized that you can make an, an option. You don't have to go to the D. You can go to a, a La or an F. So that was no problem. But the, the point was that, that there were these different voices. And, and that's why I think the, ex, the exposure to that music is what made the difference. Now, I remember speaking of exposure, when I was a little girl, I was a student in, in grade school. I think I was maybe third or fourth grade. Now, the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra had rehearsals that would be open up to the schools um, I don't know, maybe once a month or something like that. And certain schools would have their dates. Okay, so I, I would, be, would be one of those going to the symphony to hear the, the orchestra. So I remember the first, the very first time I was sitting in there, how uh, the conductor, his name was Vladimir Goldschmann, never shall forget him, how he explained all the instruments. 
and one instrument would play would play something, the flute would play something, and the oboe would play something, and the clarinet would play something, and he could explain each of those of those instruments, mm -hmm. and until you became became aware of of what their sound was, the violin and the viola mm -hmm. and the violoncello, and I mean this was these were these were, and, and the piece of music that they were playing was Peter and the Wolf, so you can imagine all the different sounds that they were playing for, and we, and we, could, we could be oohing and aahing on, on all of those different sounds. And that's how I came to become interested, I think, in, I think that was the reason, in classical music. But, but I, I always had in my, in my inner ear, I always had in my inner ear, even though we didn't sing spirituals in our, in our church, we had them, we had them on Sunday night service. Mm -hmm. My father was a member of the gospel chorus. So my father sang in the, in the evenings, evening service. So, but, but we kids didn't have to go, but sometimes we did. So I, I had a little bit of, of knowledge about that. Plus my father played the piano by ear and he would play those songs that they would be singing on Sunday evening. And I would, and we'd be sitting down and listening to him, patting our foot and shaking, you know, um, <laughs> back and forth. So I, I knew some of those songs just by hearing. Plus, don't forget, St. Louis is a Midwestern city. We would like to even think sometimes a, a Southern city. So you heard that on, on Saturday, Saturday was the only time we got a chance to, to listen in the morning on, on radio because we were in school all, all during the week. But on Saturday mornings, we would have our radio tuned on, and my brothers would always put on some some kind of rock rock show. Or it wasn't it wasn't rock then. It was uh, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, you know what I mean. One of those one of those programs, and uh, and we would we would be listening and singing and and patting our feet to to all of that music and sh and shaking our whatevers. And but, <laughs> but the thing the thing is that. It was always, uh, it was all, we always heard it, but I never really tried to sing it. After I realized that I couldn't, I just, I just didn't sing it. I just sort of went along, went along just with, the, with, with, with whatever noise I, I was making. My brothers could do it better than I could. Let me just re re retract that. I think the reason I couldn't sing that was because when I turned 12, I started taking voice lessons from the teacher of the school of, the, at the, at, of our choir. And his name was Kenneth Phillips. And Kenneth Phillips taught me the proper way of singing. Good breathing, good vowels, good diction, good uh, intonation. So to the point that on Sundays, my brothers would tell his friends, don't sit next to Grace. Cause you know, she's always practicing this in the front of her face singing. <laughs> <That was. laughs> so I was very conscious already at 12 of being, uh, I don't know, proper, being a proper singer, making sure that I was in tune. Uh, I mean, on tune, on pitch. And so, whereas for, for gospel singing, gospel music, you can't really expect a singer to be totally on pitch. You mm -hmm. just cannot. Because we, have, we, we often sing a lot of a blue notes, sort of between the notes. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I just, uh, I just frowned on that. So it was just a matter of, 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 of what I wanted to do. Okay, so there's something else I've read and I feel like you would be a good person to ask and you don't have to go too, too in depth. But when I was looking at some spiritual and gospel singers, um, such as um, Mahalia Jackson or Marion Williams, a lot of them studied voice. So for instance, J. Robert Bradley studied in Germany before becoming a uh, gospel singer here. Mahalia Jackson did some training as well. Um, so I've read that at its root, a lot of the, the techniques, like the actual, I guess, production or whatever you would call it, is very similar to that of 
a classical singer, like this at its base. Would you say, agree or? I wouldn't agree with that. In, so overall, mm -hmm. I mean, I would think that you would have to take each case uh, separately. Mm -hmm. Mahalia Jackson, I cannot imagine that she studied voice uh, to that extent. Mm -hmm. Now, these other names that you just mentioned, I, I don't know them. Mm -hmm. uh, but but I do know that there are some other singers like um, the Winans. I mm -hmm. would imagine that they studied uh, study voice. You know who I mean? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. BB and CC, uh, the, yeah. yeah. Yes, and the father. Mm -hmm. I would think that they would, they would have studied voice to some extent. I don't, I don't know to, I don't know to what extent. Uh, and you know, having studied voice does not mean that you sing well. It just means that you study voice. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody who studies, I'm sorry, but everybody who studies voice is not a good singer. Can you imagine all the singers who, who study voice and don't and don't get there? Oh my. All right. <laughs> I appreciate that. Wow. Wow. I appreciate that. I was just curious, but um so okay so i guess this will be more so a question for me in my efforts to represent or redistribute this kind of information to like the my demographic into this generation what would you advise what do you think i should know to make sure you know that it could that everything connects with the people I'm trying to reach out to. Well, you you what you're doing already is correct. Mm -hmm. You have you you reach, reached out to me, uh, and you should continue doing that. And you should then pass the information on. What I just said. That's a nice and that's a nice place, nice way to 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 meet the young people because they can get a good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> And that always calms everybody down and gives us the equality, you know. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, there are so many people, so many people who think that because you studied voice that you know what you're doing and you have a right to be a, a great star. That is not always true. There, and you have to, people have to realize that um, singing is individual. God gave us all voices, mm -hmm. and but he and he gave us all a certain degree of intelligence. But we have to also work on it. You cannot just say, say that, oh, I, I got a voice. I have a wonderful voice. Yeah, you have a beautiful voice. But what did you do with it? Did you sit down and, and, and smoke all, all, all day? Did you go out and party all, all night? And no, there's a lot of sacrificing to going, going on to this thing of singing, of singing beautifully whether it's a, 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 a classical music or pop music, there's a lot of sacrificing. And you, whether you're ready and willing to, to take those, those, uh, the, that, those sacrifices, it, it depends upon you. Mm -hmm. And whether you really want to, uh, to be the singer that you think you are. No, you really, you really need to, to take, uh, take your nerves in your hands and go to some of these black schools Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 present some some crossover uh, crossovers with them. Have them to sit down and listen to listen to this, listen to that, and see where if you if you can hear um, uh, a common ground mm -hmm. and see what they say. Because some you know you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. I remember when I was uh, singing the, the first years of my of my singing, I, I would come back to St. Louis uh, to my teacher, Mr. Billups, who was always there. And he would have, they would have the, the school um, turn out for that afternoon at two o'clock and we'd be all in, in the auditorium. There's 2000 kids now, 2000 kids in one auditorium for a classical music singer. And they would be there and they, they, they would listen. You, you could hear sometimes murmuring, mumbling. Blah, 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 blah. But then if I sing a high note and long held it a long time, Oh, they all, they all, all eyes would, would, would perk up and, and they would, oh, like that. 
So you knew you had their attention. Mm -hmm. And once you get their attention, then then you can talk to them. You should do that. Do you sing? I used to. I, I haven't sang in over a decade. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Put, some, put somebody on. Put, <laughs> put a, a good recording on with a good with a good sound effect. Mm -hmm. and, and play that for them. And then maybe play at, afterwards that person singing a spiritual. Mm -hmm. And then and then then talk to them about that. About that person singing these two genres. Oh, speaking of spirituals, okay. So would you say there's a difference between spirituals and hymnals? Yes, yes. It, be, be, between the two structures. Yeah, because most hymns can come from secular music even. Oh, for a thousand years to sing, my great redeemer's praise. That's a hymn. Now you might have heard it sung by some people who might have gospelized it. There are many, 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 many hymns, many hymns, many hymns. And the Methodist, the Methodist hymnal is a book that ha that has hymns in it, songs of praise, songs of worship, songs of the uh, of joy, uh, uh, Advent hymns. Okay, so circling back to something you mentioned previously about exposure. So would you say, just to make sure I'm correct, your, one of your first exposures to music was the more classical? I think yes, yes. Okay, and so because you were exposed to that first, do you think it helped you appreciate other types of music more? I, I don't know. I never thought of it in that, in that mm -hmm. vein. I don't, I don't know, maybe. Maybe, mm -hmm. but but you know, I, I remember as a child, our church was, I think, the oldest church west of the Mississippi, the oldest black church west of Mississippi, mm -hmm. and it was the 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 grandest. They call it the grandest church, the grandest black church, because it had a huge uh, or a pipe organ. It had this church had been had been a Jewish synagogue when when our church bought it, and they left the, the organ in there. It's a beautiful church. Even today, it's a, it, no, it's no longer there. It's been torn down. The church has been torn down. But in any case, I remember my seat was on the fourth row, and I could always see the choir when it would come in in this procession into from the lobby into the church and then out that other door and up to the choir loft so i could see them and i i was waiting for what what music are, the, are they gonna sing today coming on their procession because i was always waiting for them to, to play <laughs> Jesu, joy of man's desiring. So I could, for me, it was just a, a, another a, another world. I was in another world, and I waited for that. I waited for that, and and the, plus there was a woman who, a friend of my mother's, my husband's best friend, had this heavenly voice, very high heavenly voice, and I was always waiting to see if Mrs. Wormley was her name, Blanche Wormley, if she was in the line today, and most times she wasn't there. <laughs> because she was always late. Miss, Mrs. Wormley was always found at the, in the choir loft. But the point is, I remember that music. I remember that music. Plus the, the anthems that when I finally was able to join the, the, the junior choir, the youth choir, those songs were from that that same kind of straightforward classical music. They were not the, the kind of song that we as young people, as you, you, you would not relate to that music so easily. It was a kind of music like, like you would hear in a, in a very solemn service, but a service that the, where, where the singers, the young singers, had big voices. 
you know, a, a, a church choir that has big voices and high voices and strong voices. And you would take advantage of all of that. And the, the organist or the pianist would always bring those voices out. I, I, don't, I don't even know how to explain that. I, I, as a matter of fact, I've never even tried. This is the first time I've tried to explain that because I can't even rem remember the names of, uh, of, this, of those songs, but they were anthems. Mm -hmm. And that's another word you need to know. Anthems. Anthems, yeah. And <laughs> anthems are in what kind of book? <laughs> I think those books, I mean, those, those anthems are in, in sheet music. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Was it you who asked me about my teacher? Lotte Lehmann. That was, was Matt. You? That was Matt. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Speaking of Matt, he did have a question because he's at work right now. Um, okay. So he um, mentioned, like in the roles you were talking about, your turn dot, because you did that to great success. He was curious if yeah. you had any fun stories about that. A turn dot is not a fun piece. <laughs> but turn it on is not a fun piece and because you are working so hard from the first moment you get on that stage to the end. Now, it, it, is, it is an opera that only, that only has, I think, only one act. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, I, listen, I can't remember. All I remember is that I was on that stage until the, from the beginning when my entrance was to the end. So I, did my, I might have come in on the fourth act. I don't know. But, but it is a difficult opera, very difficult, and it lies very high. I remember having to, having to put on very white makeup because she was Chinese. And the, the Chinese, I mean, the, the, the artists at that time wore white makeup, the artists of that period. So I had to put on white makeup, the whitest I ever have in any of my roles is to and with those with those long fingernails and the long eyelashes and that very very long flowing black hair i mean it was it was it's a difficult role all around all around i i stopped singing to when my mother died because that was very very traumatic for me i, I might have sung it maybe once or twice after that but then I put it aside. The day I arrived in St. Louis after the dress rehearsal, after the first performance, my mother had, had, had already had a, a cardiac arrest and I, I flew to St. Louis the day after the first performance. And the, and the time on the death certificate was the exact time that my plane landed. So for me, th that, that says a lot, so no. I, I, it gives me a bad taste in my mouth. A couple of days ago, I was watching um, your Aida, I believe it's from, um, what well, it was your Amneris, and it was from Madrid. Is it the Madrid, Madrid or France? Madrid or France. But you were singing with Leona Mitchell, and I was so happy because oh. she is one of, she's like one of my favorite singers. And so. Really? Yes, I love her. Like with what reason, was, with reason. Yes. That was that was in Marseille, I think. Let me just let me just say something. You mentioned Leona Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Now, Leona Mitchell is a person to talk to about gospel music and and spirituals mm -hmm. and classical music mm -hmm. because she sang gospel music because of her her church affiliation. Her father was a minister. So speak to her, ask her. That there should be a wealth of information there. Yes, yes. Um, I'm actually, I did reach out to her. I'm just waiting to um, hear back. So, so. If, if she says she, she shouldn't do it, do tell her that Miss Grace says she better do it. Ah, uh, yes, I don't think I told you about that. Or maybe I did. I. At 1976, I've not sorry, 1996, I formed the Grace Bunbury Black Musical Heritage Vocal Ensemble. Mm -hmm. And this vocal ensemble made its debut 
at the Salzburg Festival. Now that is the number one festival in the world for classical music. And what did we sing? Spirituals and gospels. Now, why did I do that? I did it on purpose. I formed this organization, this choir, because there had been such confusion as to what is spirituals and what is gospel. I was often being asked, "Are you? do you sing gospel? I said, no, I don't sing. What do you mean you don't sing gospel? I said, I don't sing gospel, I sing spirituals. Well, that's the same. No, it's not the same. So I decided uh, that I would clarify that by forming this group. And this group, we reopened the, the Salzburg Festival, the Stiff Salzburg Festival, with spirituals in the first half of the program and gospels in the second half. We, have a, we were a chorus of 27 and, and with, with piano, only with piano. And most of the time, most of the time, not even with piano, gospel music with piano, but the spirituals were all a cappella which you cannot sing gospel uh, without, without some instrument. You've got, you got to have some kind of instrument there. So in any case, that was, that show goes to, and it was, and it was sold out in no time flat. And the, the, the manager said we could have sold it twice. We could have done two concerts there, but we were on schedule for one. So, mm -hmm. but the point I want to make is that it's all about exposure and the, 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 uh, the, um, the applause was thunderous, thunderous. Sometimes in, in, in standing ovations in, in between. And this is this tells you a lot because, because you know, the Salzburg Austrians are not very prone to, to being so enthusiastic mm -hmm. unless you really touch them. And they were touched. So it goes to show you it has to do with how you present it. That, that, and I'm putting it to you now. So in case, I just want to make sure I got this answer on record, just in case I didn't ask, could you differentiate the difference between gospel and spirituals? The spiritual is a piece of music that was brought about by our slave forefathers. And they were mostly sung in group. Sometimes there were there were solos, but usually there was a, a, a what do you call it? Uh, response and call, call and response, call and response. Whereas gospel music was was came about in the early part of uh, of last century. Spirituals came about in sixteen hundreds. When we came over from the slave ships, on the slave ships, 1676 or something like that, the the format is different. Format is different. So, why do you think people think they're the same? I think I think because uh, this the gospel gospel music took over, and you you had a, a different uh, beat. You had an, an upbeat for the with, with gospel music, which you didn't have with the spiritual. The spiritual was more somber and uh, had a had a different message, a message that was mournful. Um, always looking forward, looking forward to 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 meet our our savior, as as is the case also with gospel music. But gospel music has a different beat. Gospel music is is upbeat, and people 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 can can relate to that more than to to more soulful music. Mm. That's how I see it anyway. That's and that's understandable because that's sort of how I view it as well. <laughs> <laughs> so let me think. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I would like to thank you so much, so 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 much for your time. Thank right. you. All right. Have a good day. You too.